Good morning everyone. I am Dr. T. V. Jayanti Shastri. I am an ENT head and neck surgeon. I am attached to Manipal uh, Hospital, Maleshwaram. Today I would like to speak to you about vertigo. Vertigo means in a common term it is giddiness. Okay. But uh, all giddiness need not be all giddiness need not be vertigo and um, but vertigo uh, is many a times giddiness. So, uh, I would like to briefly tell you uh, what means what it means what giddiness means what vertigo means and uh, how we can tackle it. So, parts of the body that actually maintain our balance are brain, vestibular system, eyes and spinal cord. So, in the brain there are parts like cerebellum, cerebrum and brain stem which are mainly uh, responsible for maintaining the balance and uh, vestibular system is there in the ear and our eyes helps us to uh, uh, maintain our uh, this one to look into where we are, what we are doing and all that and our spinal cord helps us to feel the our sitting, standing and other positions. So, how does actually this uh, all these systems work together? There is a sensory input from the atmosphere to us like uh, which uh, in which space we are standing and uh, whether we are standing crookedly or whether we are standing straight, whether we are bending a knee, all these things are uh, this spatial and whether we, there is any rotation in movement or whether there is any linear movement, all these uh, things are uh, absorbed and by the vestibular system. And our eyes tells us since we can see our eyes tells us whether we are uh, at a height or uh, whether we are in the uh, ground or whatever. So, we can see it and we can of course, the eyes collects all this information and our uh, proprioceptive touch means proprioceptive touch means whatever uh, is in the spinal cord. Our spinal cord uh, there are two columns which actually uh, <coughs> helps us uh, to understand whether our feet is touching the ground or whether our uh, uh, hip is touching the ground or where we are standing whether our shoulder is touching the wall all this is uh, absorbed by the proprioceptive sensations. <coughs> this input is then carried to the brain and in the brain the cerebellum is the one where uh, it coordinates and regulates the posture and movement and balance. The cerebrum is actually for the higher functions and that is level of thinking, memory and uh, all those things cerebrum is for the higher functions. And when all this input comes to the brain stem, the brain stem uh, gives out the <coughs> it integrates the and uh, uh, it gives out the uh, this one to the motor system that means what you should do whether you should stand straight, are you crooked, if you should stand straight, whether there is a rotatory movement, are you supposed to hold on to something, all that is uh, and how your uh, uh, eye moves and all that is a motor system. Vestibular ocular reflex we call it, we suppose there is a rotation movement and when the eyes are, when the body is turning like that, the eyes turns, uh, corrects itself back, that is a vestibular ocular reflex. So, <clears throat> like it is just like how you see a train passing you actually you keep looking like that as the train is passing. So, that is called that is the vestibular ocular reflex. So, the, uh, these help in controlling the eye uh, movements and also the body postures. Finally, the balance is achieved. So, uh, in this picture you can see that there are some three semicircular canals in the ear. So, there are three semicircular canals in both the ears. Hmm? So, these are the main uh, apparatus to maintain balance in our body. So, in the semicircular canals in the next picture you can see that at the end there is a uh, swelling, there is a uh, bulging. These ends are called the ampulla and the, these ampulla help in uh, giving us the sensation of rotation. They actually tell us that you are moving in this direction. So, uh, and there are there is a uh, thing called utricle and saccule, you can see it is mentioned there utricle and saccule. These are the ones that help us uh, understand the linear movement like you are moving in the train in a linear way. So, that is uh, these are the ones that help us understand the linear movement. So, uh, it is actually a complex the whole thing is a very complex uh, 
procedure, but uh, it happens just in seconds when actually you can you are in the you are in this position you can immediately understand that you are in this position. See how quickly the brain works, how the how our body reflexes work. So, uh, and the brain balance is maintained so quickly actually. So, uh, what happens when there is a, a derangement in these things? So, at that time the there is a thing called vestibulospinal reflex where uh, the, you will start uh, the sensation of the body is being whether the sensation being is hurled or pulled that kind of sensation is felt when there is a derangement in this. And uh, what happens our uh, eye starts moving uh, when wherever it is hurled and pulled uh, eye starts moving a little to correct that uh, uh, this one. At that time what happens there will be something called a eye movement called as nystagmus. And then uh, that it goes on to the limbic system in the brain the whole uh, thing there is a derangement uh, there is a there, there will be a news to the limbic system that there is a derangement somewhere and the limbic system will start uh, uh, developing some vomiting sensation due to the sympathetic stimulation. So, um, when a person comes to us so the diagnosis is mainly based on history 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 that is a very important thing in these cases. And, uh, what are we, f but first when the patient comes, what are we first ruling out? We have to rule out all the important things like uh, any problem with the cardiovascular system or any problem with the nervous system, all this we have to rule out. So, uh, what we are going to ask them, is there any shortness of breath, is there any chest pain, is there any uh, symptoms of panic attacks, because sometimes even panic attacks can cause a kind of giddiness, the patient feels giddy. And is there any new medications that the patient has started or if already the patient is on medication has there been any alterations in the medications that, that the patient was taking. So, all this actually uh, is a very important thing to rule out all other problems uh, to come to a conclusion that it is nothing but spinal uh, vestibulospinal problem. So, uh, we have to check all the vital signs like um, whether there is any hypertension that is high BP or hypotension is there any low BP or bradycardia. Bradycardia means is there any reduction in the uh, heart rate. Okay. So, all these things point out to a different thing like a cardiac problem. So, we have to check all this. Also, we have to do ECG and blood glucose and serum electrolytes as a basic test because sometimes serum electrolytes like sodium for example, sodium if it reduces in the body uh, then also there can be a feeling of giddiness, of tiredness and uh, so even uh, minute reduction well, normal is 136 if it reduces to 130, 129 then the patient starts feeling uh, little uh, this one. So, we, that is a very important thing which can also be corrected very easily. So, the, all these things we have to rule out before we say yes it is uh, due to the ear. So, what is the history we take due to the ear? What do we say? So, uh, first of all we ask the patient to describe the symptoms. What is it? Whether it is a rotatory vertigo or whether it is just an unsteadiness or uh, what happens when he does it happen when it get, gets up from the bed or when he lies down uh, in the night or when he lies down and turns to one side. We, we have to ask all this history and whether it is persistent, whether it is there throughout the day or is it there in between uh, or in at any particular intervals or uh, is it in between intervals, is it completely gone, is the patient symptom free in between intervals, all this is uh, very important to us and is there any associated uh, symptoms like nausea, anxiety or any neurological problems, headache. Headache is very important uh, uh, history for uh, to rule out um, because uh, migraine is one of the re, uh, causes for giddiness also. So, uh, initially the patient might have only headaches, then he may develop headache with my with uh, giddiness, then later on it headache may completely disappear and there may be only headache only giddiness. So, uh, vesti what this uh, particular entity we call as vestibular migraine which is actually very common because it is introduced uh, induced due to stress and things like that which is very common. So, that we have to rule out. So, we ask a very important history is asking about headache. So, any other ear symptoms like uh, ear discharge or decreased hearing or a ringing sensation in the ear is all very important to us. Uh, after asking about the ear then 
turn to the eyes whether there is any blurring of the vision, whether there is any double vision all that. Uh, if there is double vision and things like that directly it points to the brain, there is a problem with the brain probably. So, uh, any other neurological symptoms like uh, for example, in Parkinson's disease what happens as the patient is walking towards a target, he suddenly wa starts walking too fast or when he is trying to, he or she is trying to drink something, there will be a spillage of water. All this, all this history we have to take. And any other uh, risk factors like for example, if the has the patient has had a head injury or are there any or there are, are there are any ototoxic drugs. Ototoxic drugs means drugs which are actually uh, toxic to the ear. Uh, so, what happens in sometimes these drugs cannot be avoided due to various other important uh, reasons and these drugs actually start uh, causing making the ear uh, nerves weaker. So, there can be a hearing loss, there can be some giddiness and things like that. So, we have to take a history of the drugs and then uh, where is there, there is any spondylosis, even the neck spondylosis also can uh, cause uh, kinking of the kinking of the uh, blood supply to the brain and le leads on to giddiness. And is there any whiplash injury? Whiplash injury is uh, when a person for example, is traveling in a car very fast and uh, there is a sudden brakes are applied that times what happens uh, the body comes to an inertia, but the brain inside moves to, uh, to and fro inside the skull and gets injured. So, any such uh, uh, episodes are there. So, all this is important to uh, arrive at a diagnosis. And as the patient is walking into our uh, uh, clinic, we see how the patient is walking in. It is important to notice, observe how he is walking in. Uh, some patients with uh, um, as I said positional vertigo, they look at the uh, floor and uh, walk so that they do not trip and fall. So, this uh, is observation is very important and bedside examinations we do in all the patients with vertigo careful bedside examination is important. As I said we have to look at the eyes, ears, cardiovascular system, neurological system as well as the ear, the vestibular system. There are certain tests for the vestibular system which will be done, I will tell you later. And importantly, we have to differentiate between the central vertigo and the peripheral vertigo. Uh, central vertigo means it that which is arising from the brain and peripheral vertigo means that which is arising from the ears or sometimes from the vestibular uh, spinal cord. So, uh, central vertigo um, actually, it is very important, there are certain differentiating points between the two, but many a times it can be overlapping. And once we know it is a central vertigo, we have to do other examinations like MRI and things like that. So, uh, so that we do not miss any tumors, what why a central vertigo occurs, there are certain tumors in the brain that can cause, there can be a tuberculosis of the uh, tubercular, uh, this one of the brain that can cause. and. Uh, Cysticercosis means there are certain worms that uh, make their way into the this one uh, uh, that uh, lay eggs and the eggs make their way into the brain and can call lay uh, and uh, st uh, station themselves in certain areas which leads to this kind of a giddiness or something central vertigo whatever. So, all these things have to be ruled out hence it is very important for us to rule out whether it is a central vertigo or a peripheral vertigo. So, then uh, how the patient presents to us either with a rotational vertigo means either the whole building is spinning or he himself is spinning. So, uh, this we call as an acute vestibular disorder. This can happen even with a simple viral infection, any common cold or even uh, the recently what we had uh, coronavirus with all these viral infections a simple acute vertigo can occur. Hmm? So, uh, the other uh, vertigo, the type of vertigo is a positional vertigo that is when the patient gets up from the bed or for, lies down on the bed when he sits up or uh, sits down or stands up or sometimes on when lying on the bed when they turn their head to the right or the left this, this is called a positional vertigo. And uh, there can be vertigo unsteadiness without actual proper vertigo. That means, uh, as the, the patient will have an unsteady gait. This can happen in when both the vestibular systems means from uh, both the ears the signals have become very weak, then there can just be an unsteadiness there need not be a regular vertigo. Okay. So, and uh, this can this kind of unsteadiness can happen in some cerebellar uh, problems also as well as some neuromuscular problems also. And there can be some non-specific giddiness like 
presyncope. For example, a uh, person sees blood and he cannot take it. So, he is feeling giddy and if he falls down that is called something uh, the presyncope type the, that is called syncope actually falling is called syncope the presyncope time he can have a giddiness that is also possible that is called non-specific giddiness. And some uh, times in psychogenic patients uh, because of the uh, this one um, uh, the anxiety the panic attack and other things there can be some amount of the uh, giddiness. Uh, sometimes they can feign giddiness also in order to gain attention or something like that. So, uh, what is actually, so this is about the giddiness and what are the complications or, or consequences of this giddiness. The patient has fear to move around by themselves and uh, they lose that confidence uh, in the daily activities. Suddenly the patient can fall and uh, there can be fractures or dislocations and things like that. And there can be road traffic accident also. Suppose a person is driving and he turns left or right to look at something, then suddenly he can have giddiness and he, he cannot have the judging capacity and he can uh, get, have a traffic accident. Also, a person who is uh, crossing the road, also looking that side and this side and carefully crossing also can set, develop sudden giddiness and have some road traffic accidents. And there can be fire accidents in the kitchen because uh, uh, the lady who, who is uh, lady or male who is working in the kitchen will have to bend, get up and things like that. During those times, if they develop sudden giddiness, they can fall on the stove or they can, there can be some uh, accidents like that. And uh, finally, what happens to these patients? They become kind of dependent, though uh, not fully physically dependent, also, but they become mentally dependent and they lose so much of confidence. So, it is very important that a patient with vertigo uh, communi uh, talks to us as early as possible and uh, uh, so that we can solve this problem at the uh, bud itself instead of it allowing it to becoming become more and more. So, uh, what uh, uh, I th this is all about uh, vertigo when you come to us what we can do for this that I am going to uh, explain to you in the next video. Uh, uh, so, please uh, stay with us for the next video. Thank you for joining uh, me in this uh, FB live session. Uh, if you like this video, uh, kindly share it with your family members and friends uh, so that uh, they can be also uh, uh, benefited by this. And uh, um, if anybody has such kind of uh, uh, symptoms, they can contact us so that uh, we will be able to help them. Uh, so, meet you all in my next session. Thank you.